The first step in updating the Denon DJ MCX 8000 firmware is to go directly to the Denon DJ site. You can see that I have Google pulled up here. I simply typed in Denon DJ MCX 8000 firmware update and the first link that pops up is the one that we want to visit. This is going to bring you to their main page. Now if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a section properly labeled as Downloads. And right here we have the MCX8000 Firmware Update version 2.0. So I'm going to begin by clicking this and then saving it to my desktop. Now that my firmware update has been downloaded, the next step is to get this onto a thumb drive so that we can then install this in the 8000. So in order to do this, I have taken the time to put in my thumb drive and I'm gonna get that opened up right here. And then I'm going to open up the zip file that I downloaded and put that right here. Now there's two things you need in order to get this to work. Number one, the USB drive must be formatted as FAT32 and the FW file must be on the root level of the drive and not inside a folder. So I'm simply going to drag this file and move it directly to my thumb drive. Once it has loaded, I'm then ready to insert the thumb drive into the 8000 to start the upload process. Once you have everything loaded onto your thumb drive, you can then insert it into the USB 1 port. Now, it is recommended on the instructions that you do this while the controller is off. But in order for me to record this video, I need the controller on, so I just want to let you know what I did prior to turning the controller on. So I loaded the thumbstick in, and then we also have to make sure that channels 1 and channels 2 are in the centered engine position. Then you should power on the controller, and your USB should show up right here on the screen. Now that we have our thumb drive inserted, our next step is to press and hold the utility view button. You're going to hold this until the utility menu pops up. We are then going to use the select load wheel to scroll in this menu all the way to the bottom until we reach the update firmware. To start the firmware update, I now have to press the select load wheel once and I will get an OK prompt. Now from here, I then have to press the select load wheel again one more time to start the update process. So now I'm going to check that the update actually took. So I'm going to start again by holding the View Utility button. I'm going to scroll down to the Firmware Update. And then from here you can see that it says Up to Date, so I know that everything was installed. I do also want to make mention that it is very important that you wait until the update process has completed all four hardware components, meaning the display, the MCU, the display assets, engine, and the control MCU. It is very, very important that you do not power off your device during this process. Once complete, the device will automatically shut off and turn on again like you saw, and then you should be ready to go. As I wrap up this MCX8000 firmware update video, I just wanted to show a little love to the Engine Prime software. Now Denon has a great quick start video available on YouTube, so I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here, but if you're unfamiliar with what Engine Prime software is, I wanted to give a quick explanation. Now, one of the most exciting things about this uh, 8000 2.0 firmware update is that now the 8000 is compatible with Engine Prime software. Prior to this, I believe this program was only compatible with the SC5000. So this has opened up a lot of opportunity for us to manage our music. So essentially, Engine Prime is a music management system that allows you to prep and optimize your music library, how you play back that music, and also your file navigation experience when you're using the screens, also known as Engine, on your 8000. 
This software is super easy to use, which is one of the reasons why I love it. This is simply a drag and drop program. So I have two music folders right here on my desktop and I'm simply just gonna drag these right into the collection column. From here, Engine Prime is going to start analyzing these files that I have dumped into this collection. And then from there, we can start making the adjustments that we want to within the program. This program also allows you to import your iTunes library as well as your Serato library, and it will import all your hot cues and things that you have marked on those files as well. I have my database loaded, so now I need to optimize this for my 8000. And in order to do that, I have to come up to the preferences button right up here, click on library, and then you're going to see under support this enable MCX 8000 compatibility. This is going to make sure that the files that I have dumped into this program are going to work with the 8000. So you have to enable this. Once we've done this, we now can start to look at what files are actually compatible. Now you can see that I just dragged this MCX 8000 compatible column and pretty much if it has a dot, it means it's going to work with the controller. Now I believe there are ways around this. To my understanding, the MCX 8000 will only support files that are 44.1 kilohertz and will also support um, FLAC files, ALAC, AIFF, and WAVE. I'm not gonna dive too much into this. Again, Denon has created a great video, but I just wanna let you know that you do have to optimize this music to be compatible with the controller. To start editing your tracks, all you have to do is drag one of these files up into the rhythm window. From here is where you can start making your edits. For example, I can adjust the beat grid here. Now this does look like it's pretty locked in. But if I needed to make an adjustment, I could tap these arrows and make fine adjustments here. I can also set cue points and I can select the color of the cue. There's a ton of things you can do with this track, but really it's about prepping this beforehand so that when you load everything on to your device and you're ready to go, your tracks are customized the way you wanted them to be. Our last step is to now get the music formatted and onto our thumb drive so that we can then use it in our 8000. This is as simple as clicking and dragging as well. So I've inserted my thumb drive and it's recognized by this program and all I have to do is come over and simply click and drag these onto my thumb drive. And you can see right here, it's analyzing and loading these tracks on right here. Lastly, we have to export this onto our thumb drive by coming down here at the bottom and hitting export to MCX 8000. As you can see, it's starting the extraction process and as soon as this is done, we can go ahead and get this loaded into our MCX 8000 ready to play. I do wanna show sometimes you will get a pop-up where this has let me know that three tracks in this database that I loaded onto my thumb drive are not compatible with the 8000. It does happen. Um, I think there are ways around this, but again, it has to be at the 44.1 kilohertz and either a FLAC file, ALAC file, AIFF, or WAVE. So that's probably my issue here, but it's not a big deal unless it's a track you really, really wanted, then you may have to go with a workaround, but this is just for an example, so it's not a big deal for me. So I'm simply gonna click OK and then get this thumb drive loaded into my controller. Okay, so I have my thumb drive loaded into the 8000. You can see that I have these crates loaded here. So if I go to one of them, you can now see that I have title, genre, BPM. This all wasn't available before the update. So if I go to title and I click what's on my thumb drive, I now have the title, the artist, and the beats per minute. So it makes mixing off of this super, super easy.
Easy no, no need to go down. Drop that one, that this how it sound. Easy no, no need to go down. Drop that one, that this how it sound. Easy no, no need to go down. Drop that one, that this how it sound. Easy no, no need to go down. Drop that one, that this how it sound. Wait, 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 wait,